Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to optimize and backtest a zero beta portfolio. Here are some of the packages we're going to require. And in this particular tutorial, I decided to optimize a list of ETFs. But if you want to backtest your own set of symbols, you would just have to replace line four with the symbols you want to backtest and optimize. We're going to create a new environment, get open, high, low, close data from Yahoo Finance and store everything in this new environment. After we download our data, we're going to go ahead and merge all the closes. We then format the column names by dropping the dot adjusted so that we're only left with the symbol for column names. Since the list of ETFs is fairly large, I decided to condense my list and only backtesting ETFs that have an average volume of 10 million shares per day. And I do that by extracting all my volumes for the ETFs stored in my environment, calculating the means for each of the ETFs. And after that table gets reduced, I extract the row names for all those ETFs that met my criteria, stored into tickers, and then use that to subset all my closes. And just so that I don't have to repeat this process, I save closes as an RDS file. So we're gonna go ahead and read that in. If we take a look at closes, we have 280 different ETFs ranging back to the beginning of last year. So now that we have this XTS object, we can calculate the daily return and store it into this variable called RETS. If there's any NAs, I'm just gonna fill those with zeros. All right, so now for rebalancing, I want to backtest every six months. So I created two sequence of dates. So this first line focuses on the beginning of each month and the one right below it will be a sequence for the end of each month. These two lines will give us a sequence of dates ranging until 2023. So I wanna go ahead and just focus up to 2022 so that I can subset my start and end dates up to this year end since we don't have any data for 2023. So if we run this block, now that we have our start and end dates, we can calculate ranges. So I'm gonna store that in date ranges. So if we take a look at date ranges here in our console, we now have four different semi-annual ranges. So I'm gonna optimize and backtest these first three, and then we're gonna extract the weights and do a walk forward and see what the returns look like. So as an example, I'll backtest the first half of 2021. Once I get the weights from this range, I'll apply them into the following six months and so on. But the first thing we need to calculate using these ranges is our betas. So by passing in our date range and the benchmark name, we're gonna go ahead and calculate betas every six months. Inside this function, you'll see an L apply. We pass our date ranges as a list. So for each of these date ranges, we're gonna subset our returns. As a self check, I'm gonna exclude any ETFs that are not trading during that time period. And I do that by keeping only ETFs whose column sum does not equal zero. Now that we have this list of active ETFs, I can go ahead and calculate our betas. And again, we're using L apply, passing one through the number of columns in our active ETF list. And for each of those ETFs, we run cap and beta by passing in our ETF as a risky asset. Our benchmark is the benchmark the user passes in and I set the risk-free rate equal to zero. And then once I calculate betas for all the ETFs, I'm just gonna row bind all of my results, return it as a data frame, format the column names, add the ticker and the date as columns, and then finally just return that data frame. So it'll calculate betas for all of our date ranges, get saved into this variable called df, and then we use our bind list to row bind all of our results and return that as a data frame. So I'm gonna minimize this function and run it. I'm gonna calculate betas for all my date ranges and my benchmark will be the SPY. And if we take a look at betas, so we have our betas, our ticker and our date range. Now we can proceed with our optimization. So now we can set up our portfolios by adding objectives and constraints. In portfolio analytics, there is a function called optimize portfolio rebalancing, I believe where we set our constraints and our objectives. And for one of the parameters, we can insert how often we want to rebalance. But in this tutorial, since I calculated betas every six months, I didn't want to use that function since our betas were recalculated every six months. So instead, I opted for using optimized portfolio, where we manually have to run this optimization for each item in our date ranges. So in total, I have three back tests or optimizations that I have to run manually just because our betas were being recalculated. So here at the top, we see that we have our iterator and we're gonna use that to subset our betas and our returns by the given date range. 
So by having the three as my iterator, it'll backtest the third item in my date ranges list, which is the beginning of 2022 up until June 30th of that same year. We subset our betas that match that date range, only extract the beta values, use the same table to get the list of all the tickers that we were able to calculate betas for and subset my returns. And once I have this table, I can then subset all of our returns to only those six months. So R will be our returns for that six month period. And then I store all of my ETF names into funds so that we can later extract weights. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this block. So we start off by assigning our portfolio. For assets, we're just gonna pass in the symbol names and it'll get stored into port one. For objectives, I wanna maximize return and reduce risk. So for return, we're using the mean. For risk, we're using the standard deviation. And for constraints, we see that for risk, we wanna set our risk equal to zero. For position limits, I want to be long at the most four different assets. The total sum of the weights must be between 0.97 or 101. So I'm seeking to be 100% long. Again, we're long only. And for our factor exposure, we're gonna pass in our betas for this period. And we're gonna try and optimize our betas to be between negative 0.05 and positive 0.05, very close to zero as possible. Also for each asset, I have constraints on the weights. So I want to have exposure of at least 5% to a maximum of 50%. So we're boxing in our weights by passing in our limits for those weights. And then I create a new environment to save my results called storage. And we're gonna pass in our returns, our portfolio, which contains the constraints and objectives. For optimized method, I'm gonna use DE Optim. For the number of iterations on the optimization, I set this equal to 20, but I suggest you increase this to at least 100 or 200. So at every iteration, it tries to find the best combination of weights given our constraints. It may not be able to find the best results given the slow number of iterations. Our search size is equal to 2000 and trace is equal to true. So you'll get a printout at every iteration into your console. Just note that if you have many different assets, the optimization may take a while. If you recall from my ETF list, I have over 200 different ETFs that I want to optimize. So for the 20 iterations, it took several hours to run. I saved the results for each of these optimizations. So we're gonna take a look at those. But in this tutorial, I wanted to show at least one iteration out in the console so you know what to expect when you run this. So I'll go ahead and run this block and then I'll run the optimization. And then once I get a printout out in the console, I'll go ahead and show you and explain what the numbers mean. All right, so at each iteration, you'll see something like this. Each of these values represents the weight given our constraints and our objectives. For most, you will see a zero, but on instances where we get a value other than zero, that will represent the stock or ETF in the optimization that best fits our constraints and our objectives. So it'll continue trying to optimize until we hit our maximum iteration, which is 20. Well, let's go ahead and interrupt this and continue on with our script. All right, I ended up running this prior to this recording. So I'm just gonna read the optimizations for each of the date ranges, and we're gonna save them into these variables. So let's go ahead and run that. Once you have your results from the optimization, we can plot the optimal weights. So we'll go ahead and run this line and let's go ahead and zoom into that plot. According to the results, this is the optimal portfolio and we also see the ETFs and their weights. So we see three here and then there's one down here. Now let's go ahead and extract these weights. In portfolio analytics, they have a function called extract weights. So let's go ahead and run that to extract all the weights. Let's take a closer look at the weights out in the console. So you get the weights for all the ETFs. Now we need to subset only those ETFs that actually have weights. So in the following line, we will only keep those ETFs that actually have weights. So here out in the console, we see that we have four ETFs. Now we can go ahead and use these weights to get the results the following six months. If you're curious to know what the beta is for this portfolio, you can go ahead and run this block. So we're gonna go ahead and check and make sure that our beta is close to zero. So if we run beta sum, we have a beta that's very close to zero according to the combination of these ETFs and their weights. So let's continue on with our script. Now we're gonna extract our returns for those four ETFs the following six months. 
So by using the names in our weights, I'm gonna subset our returns. So here I'm subsetting for the following six months. And here in this line, we check to see what the returns are for the end of that period. So it looks like the portfolio returned a negative five and a half percent. And we can also check by ticker or symbol. So if we run this line, here we see the returns per ETF. It looks like the portfolio got largely impacted by this ETF, which returned a negative 10%. Now let's go ahead and plot the results against our benchmark. Here I'm just gonna get one vector of returns by multiplying our weights with the ETF returns. We're gonna assign it a column name and we're gonna go ahead and plot the returns compared to the S&P 500. All right, as you can see, given these weights, we underperformed the benchmark, but since we're seeking a beta of zero, it kind of did its job accurately where we don't have any exposure to the benchmark. So it shouldn't correlate or move with the benchmark itself. I think we would have seen some better results if I would have increased the number of iterations since I was only limiting to 20. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plot our returns according to the optimization for all three periods. So let's close this out. These following two blocks are exactly the same thing, but only doing it for the second set of weights and the third set of weights. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract the weights, apply it to the next period and get my vector of returns. Do the same thing for the third iteration and get the returns for that period. Now we're going to combine all three period returns and go ahead and plot it against the benchmark. All right, so as you can see, we still underperformed the S&P 500, although I think we would have seen better results by changing the number of iterations. But at least you know how to set everything up. If you want to test a set of stocks or a different set of ETFs, you'll know how everything works and runs. Well, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll post a link down in the description area to the Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.